Welcome to this YSL Report Builder tutorial. This is a follow-up to an earlier video in the playlist which describes an alternative approach to creating optional report parameters. We'll begin with a quick reminder of the earlier approach we've used, which was to allow null values for the report parameters and then substitute those null values in your filters on the dataset. We'll then describe the alternative approach, which is to create a Boolean filter expression. And by the end of the video, we'll look at how to add multiple logical tests to that same filter expression to create a complete working example. So let's get started. As a quick reminder of what we're aiming to achieve here, this report shows a table of films with some optional parameters to control which films get displayed. So for example, I've entered the value for a maximum runtime of 100 minutes at the moment, so I'm only showing films up to and including 100 minutes. If I tick the null box, however, and then view the report again, I'll return all the films regardless of what the runtime is. The way we made this system work in the earlier video was to check if the parameters value was null, substitute the null with a value relevant to the field. So for example here, ticking the null box for, for the runtime minutes replaces the null with an arbitrarily large number to make sure that we include all the films. That system works, but it's a little bit messy and, and requires quite a lot of work. You have to write a separate if statement for each individual parameter and then pick a relevant sensible substitution value. So in this video, we'll take a different approach that's a little more efficient and a little easier to manage. If you'd like to follow along, you'll need a copy of the YSL Movies database. So just again, a quick reminder that you can get that from this video. It shows you how to install it. And there's a link in that video's description to download the script file you'll need. But assuming you've done that already, I've got a brand new blank report waiting for me in Report Builder. And I'm going to begin by adding a data source. So I'll right click data sources and choose add data source. I'll call this one movies, or I'll spell movies correctly. And then I'll choose to use an embedded connection pointing to a Microsoft SQL server, and then click the build button to get a bit of help constructing the connection string. A shortcut to the local host dot backslash, and then the name of the instance of SQL server I'm using, which in my case is SQL 2017. And then from the drop down list towards the bottom, I can select my movies database. Once I've done that, I can click OK a couple of times. And next, I can create a data set. So I'll right click on the movie's data source and choose to add a data set to it. I'll call this one Films and then use the Query Designer to help me select the list of columns I'll need. So from my tables list, I'll go to the Film table and I'll pick the title, the release date, and the runtime minutes fields. Having done that, I can click OK a couple of times. And there's my data set created. And then finally, just for something basic to display in the report, I'll tidy up a little bit first by removing the page footer and then getting rid of this placeholder title text box. I'll then insert a new table and I'll position the title, release date and runtime minutes fields in there just to tidy up with some very basic formatting. One important thing for me to do is to make sure I've modified the font property. So I'll select all the cells in the table and then switch away from the default to font and then back to the default. And that's just to avoid running into the font rendering bug, which you may have encountered yourself before. I'll then just do some very basic formatting for the table, including formatting the release date as a date. And then I can run the report just to check that I see some sensible results and that that looks good so far. So I'll head back to the design view. Next, I'll create a report parameter which allows the user to search for a film by its title. So I'm going to right click into the parameters grid or I can also do that from the parameters folder, of course, and choose add parameter. I'll call this one title text and then I'll enter a prompt, something like enter the title text and a quick reminder that the user can use an asterisk as a wildcard. So use asterisk as wildcard. The data type will be text and I'm going to allow a null value as well. So at that point I can click OK and then I can add a filter to my data set to make sure that we, uh, we actually see the, the table filtered. So I'm going to right click on the film's data set and choose data set properties head to the filters page. And just as a reminder of the technique we used in the earlier video, if I add a filter, I can select the title field and then check to see where the title field is like the value of the parameter. So if I head to the FX button to launch the expression builder, choose the parameters list and then double click the title text parameter and then click OK a couple of times. 
if I run the report, I can uncheck the null box and then type in uh, part of the, the film title I want to see. So I've typed in the word star followed by an asterisk. So that shows me any film whose first four characters are the letters S-T-A-R. The problem at this point, of course, is that if I tick the null box and view the report again, there are no films whose title is like null. So what we need to do now is substitute the null for a value that's relevant to the field we're comparing it against. To modify the filter, I'm going to right click on the film's dataset and choose dataset properties, head back to the filters page, and then click the FX button next to the value text box. It's where we've previously referenced the title text parameter. What I'm going to do is wrap this up inside an if function. So after the equals operator, I'm going to type in IIF, open some round brackets. Then I'm going to ask if the parameters title text value is nothing, followed by a comma. And then if that's true, I want to just use a simple wildcard character. If I, if I substitute the null for a single asterisk, that will find films with any text in their title. So inside some double quotes, I can enter an asterisk followed by another comma. And then if the parameter is not null, then I simply want to use its value. So I'm going to go back to the parameters list again and double click the title text parameter, close the parentheses or the round brackets, click OK a couple of times and then run the report. And we should see immediately when we run the report, the value of the parameter is null. So that's substituted for an asterisk. So we see all the films from the table because every film's title has at least a character in it. So that technique works, but it does become quite high maintenance the more parameters you add. Every single parameter which you want to make optional, you have to write an if statement for to check whether it's nothing, and then pick a sensible substitute value for it if that's the case. We're going to take a slightly different approach. I'm going to head back to the design view at this point, and then go back to the films dataset and choose dataset properties, head back to the filters page, and then this time I'm just going to delete the existing filter. We'll start a new one from scratch. I'm going to create one single filter for this data set, which we will add to as we work further through the video. And the idea behind this filter is that I'm going to generate an expression which determines whether or not the row in the table or in the data set should be displayed. So the entire result of this expression, no, no matter how long it gets, is going to be a simple Boolean value. It's going to be true or false. So I'm going to set the value of the data type of the, of the filter first to say Boolean. I then want to check if the result of that expression is going to be true. So I'm going to write the value true into the value box and the operator will simply be equals. And then I need to focus on how I build up the expression. So I'm going to head to the FX button next to the expression option here to open up the expression builder. And I'm going to write my first expression just to check if the title field in the data set is like the value I've entered into the parameter. I'm going to wrap this up in some round brackets. So I'm going to open up some round brackets first. I'm going to head to my fields list, double click the title field and ask if it is like, and then go to the parameters list and double click the title text parameter. So if I close the round brackets at that point, um, I'll just zoom in quickly so you can see what I've written there, hopefully a little more clearly. It's a very, very simple um, approach at this stage. I'm going to zoom back out and then click OK a couple of times and then run the report. I haven't dealt with the null part yet. That's coming in a moment. But if I uncheck the null box and I type in, let's say I'm going to type in King Kong. So the, the specific bit of text King Kong that works. If I say uh, King followed by an asterisk and that will make sure that I see all films beginning with the word King. So you can see that the basic filter is working. There is one little thing you do need to be aware of when you're writing an expression like this, because I'm comparing the value of a field with the value of a parameter using Visual Basic. String comparisons are case sensitive by default in Visual Basic. So if I type in the word king with lowercase k, or the example I used earlier on, the word star with lowercase s, they don't work. I have to make sure I match the case. I want to make sure that I don't have to match the case. I want to make this, this text box case insensitive. So I'm going to go back to the design view 
and then I'm going to go back to the Films data set and its data set properties, back to the Filters page and back to the expression that I've just built. And then I'm going to wrap up the title value and the parameter title text value in some functions that will convert the case. There are several other choices I could, I could make here, but I'm going to say in front of the title value field, I'm going to say L case, open some round brackets and then close the round brackets at the end of the word value. And then likewise, in front of the parameter, I'm going to say L case, open some round brackets and then close an extra set of round brackets at the end. So the modified version of the filter looks like so. Having done that, I'm going to click OK a couple of times and then just to demonstrate that that's working so far, I can uncheck the null box, type in the word star in lowercase characters and hit enter. Or again, I can type in the word star in uppercase characters and um, with an asterisk and hit enter. And it doesn't matter what case I use now, this will always return results based on the, the characters rather than the case of those characters. Now let's deal with the null option. At the moment, our rows are being returned if the title text matches the pattern I've typed into this parameter. I'd like to add a second criterion to that filter to say return the row if the title text matches what I've typed in, but also return the row if the parameter's value is null or nothing. So back into the design view, I'm going to head back to the films dataset properties, head to the filters page, and then back to the expression for the Boolean filter. What I'm going to do now is click just inside those two closed round brackets at the end of the filter expression, type in a space, and then the logical operator or. I'm then going to go to the parameters list and double click the title text parameter. I'll just change the width of my dialog box a little as well. And then I'm going to type in is nothing at the end, still inside those same parentheses. So just to zoom in so you can see what I've added or parameters title text is nothing. If I click OK now and then run the report again, I can see that the checkbox null is checked when I run the report. And because every single row is comparing the value of the parameter to check if it's nothing, every single row says, yes, the parameter is nothing. So I'll return this row of data. So we see every single film in the data set. That is basically the key to the entire approach. No matter how many more parameters we add in, we can check if the field we're comparing the parameter with matches the value we've entered or whether that parameter is null. So let's head back to the design view and add a couple of extra parameters to compare the runtime minutes. I'll right click just below my title text parameter and add a new parameter. I'll call this one min runtime and say something like enter the minimum runtime. I'll set the data type to be an integer and allow a null value. I can then click OK. And while I'm here, I'm going to right click next door to that parameter and add a new one. I'll call this one max runtime and say enter the maximum runtime. And then again, change the data type so that it matches the data type of the field. It's going to be an integer and then allow a null value for that one as well. To make this one work, I can go back to the films data set so I can right click and choose data set properties, head to the filters page. And I don't need to add a new filter at all. I can do all of this in the one single Boolean filter expression I'm creating. So I'm going to click the FX button again and then click at the end of the current line, add the AND logical operator. So I want to add a, a second condition that will be uh, uh, compared with an AND operator. And then on the next line, open and close a new set of round brackets. And then I can type in my two new criteria in here. So the first thing I'll do is check if the runtime minutes field is greater than or equal to, and then I'm going to go to the parameters list and double click the min runtime parameter. I'd also like to say um, I want to return a row if the runtime minutes is not greater than or equal to the min runtime parameter, but the min runtime parameter is null or nothing. So I'll add the or operator enter the min runtime parameter again and say is nothing. 
So you can hopefully see the pattern at this point. The first half of each condition is checking if the value of the field is compared in the relevant way with the value of the parameter, or that parameter doesn't have a value, is nothing. And I can just repeat that same pattern for every subsequent parameter we create. So I'll add the AND operator again at the end of that line, head down to the next line, open and close some round brackets, then I'll head over to the fields list and double click the runtime minutes field again. This time I want to check if it's less than or equal to the value of the max runtime parameter. Or check that the max runtime parameter is nothing. So again, a quick zoom in so you can hopefully see that a little more clearly. That's the entire expression. So there are quite a lot of individual conditions being tested for here, but the end result of comparing all those conditions is either true or false for each individual row in the data set. So I can zoom back out, click OK a couple of times, and then run the report. And we should see a list of all the films when the report first runs because we've checked that the parameters are null or nothing. But we can happily change the values of any individual parameter or any combination of parameter. And we can just check, I suppose, that the, uh, the text parameter still works as well. So all that looks pretty good at this point. Just to complete the example, I'd like to add a start date and an end date parameter. So back to the design view, I'm going to insert a new row to the bottom of the parameters grid. So I'll right click and choose insert row below. And then in the new row, I'm going to create a new parameter. The first one I'm going to call start date and it will say pick a start date. And the data type of course will be a date time data type and I'll allow a null value. Same thing again, to pick an end date, I can right click, add parameter. I'll call this one end date and then say pick end date. Set the data type to date time and then allow a null value here as well. Once I've done that, I simply need to go back to the films data set again and choose data set properties. Head back to the filters page, click the FX button next to the expression and then add in two more sets of criteria for the two new parameters I've created. So I'll add AND again at the end. I'll open and close some round brackets on the next line. Head to the fields list first to pick the field I, I'm comparing this parameter with. So that's the release date. Check if it's greater than or equal to the value of the start date parameter. Or check that the start date parameter is nothing. One more line to go, I'll add another AND operator, open and close some more round brackets, head back to my fields list and double click the release date, check if it's less than or equal to, from the parameters list, the end date parameter, or check that the end date parameter is nothing. So quite a lot of code written into that one single filter expression, but I think slightly preferable to writing multiple if statements, one for each individual parameter that we create. You may prefer the other approach, that's entirely up to you, um, but I thought it was worthwhile showing you the alternative. Let's just click OK a couple of times then, run the report and just check that we return all the results when we first load the report. We can then start narrowing things down by adding dates to our uh, filters. And then let's uh, restrict that a little further. Let's add a, an end date as well. And then we can indeed put in the string parameters as well. So let's see if we've got any star films between those dates. We have, and then I suppose we could do one more quick thing to check that the runtime is greater than 130. Okay, so there we go. That's the, uh, the, the aim of the approach. Um, rather than substituting nulls with values relevant to the data type of the field, you can simply check if the parameter is nothing in a long filter expression instead. Hope you found that one useful. Thanks for watching. See you next time.